What's up guys, Max Maxworks here. We're in the garage today working on this. Behind me is a 2011 CRF 250R. Um, it is a modern fuel injected dirt bike. I paid a whopping $350 for this thing because the engine is um, locked up. So it's pretty common. People downshift over have these little engines and then they drive a piston into a valve. So <clears throat> I already know that because of the spark plug out, uh, so there should be no compression. I still can't really crank it over more than half a cycle. So I know that there's some sort of interference in the chamber. So we're gonna take it apart. The general rule of thumb on these bikes is that if you're gonna have to replace the head, it's usually not worth it um, because there could be all sorts of other damage and then the whole motor's just junk. Um, but if it's just a valve or just a piston or just a valve and a piston, then uh, it's usually worth fixing. Um, because a bike like this in good condition like the one behind me is, uh, is a $2,500, $2,700 bike. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take everything apart today. Uh, my other rule of thumb on projects like this is I'll get in there, I'll take everything apart before I spend a dollar ordering anything. So you want to make sure you have a good understanding of everything that's broken before you uh, start spending money. So I already got the, uh, the gas tank off and the seat off and whatever. There's no reason to show you guys how to do that. It's just some bolts come right off. Uh, but the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get in there, we're going to take the head off so we can have a good understanding of what's going on in the cylinder. First thing we do is we pull the drain plug and as you can see it's about 50% oil, 50% coolant which immediately tells me that at the very minimum the head gasket is gone but most likely that the head is cracked and damaged and we won't be able to salvage uh, this. But <clears throat> until we get in there we won't really know for sure. Um, there's also a little weep hole here that you want to take out and let everything drain. We're just letting everything drain slowly. I went ahead and took out, there's just uh, three 12 millimeter bolts on each side that hold the uh, the head to the frame right here. You can see that this bike's been been laid down a couple times. Now we just kind of got to go and start removing stuff off of the head and uh, basically allow us to get these head bolts out of here. There he is. We've gotten all the coolant out of the motor. Got the valve cover off, just two 10 millimeter bolts on top. And there's our Unicam assembly. You got the exhaust valves right here. The intakes are down in the middle and it's definitely hitting something. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off this um, timing chain tensioner and all you gotta do is undo the tensioner and then uh, take off these uh, eight millimeter bolts and the whole assembly just pulls out. With that out of the way, you should be able to remove these 10 millimeter bolts that hold the cam in and then remove the cam. Uh, one good trick is to put a little piece of welding wire around this and hang it out. That way you never have to worry about losing the chain down through the head. Remove the cam holders and see there's a little bit of scarring in here, not too bad. And these retainer clips, make sure you don't lose these retainer clips. Also, um, these are labeled and then the two shorter bolts go towards the intake side. So here's a cam and this is what we like to see. There's um, a few marks here, but the intake lobes look completely brand new, like they've barely even been broken in. The exhaust lobe has a little bit of wear on it, but nothing too significant. I don't see anything that even resembles a flat spot or a heat mark or anything. And the bearings look to be in good shape. So I would say this cam is in good shape, so we can just put it right here. At this point, um, we have to unhook the intake throttle body thing, because normally it's a carburetor, but not here. And then we should be able to remove these safety bolts and remove the main head bolts and pull off the head. The nice thing about dirt bikes is, while they are expensive to rebuild, they are designed to be rebuilt, especially a race bike like this. Um, you just blow them up, that's just part of the business. And so they're not, not too, too hard to take apart. Here are head bolts. <clears throat> I labeled them. Now these head bolts are usually stretch bolts and you never want to reuse them, but it's nice to be able to go back and measure them to double check what you're ordering. A lot of times the rears will be different from the fronts. Now with that removed, <clears throat> we should be able to just take a small mallet and get the head busted loose, pop it out of the intake and take it out the side of the uh, side of the frame. Well, <clears throat> sometimes bikes aren't over revved. Sometimes they're just owned by dipshit motherfuckers. Take a look at this. This right here is a little Phillips head bit. And do you know where I found this? Inside the combustion chamber. This piston is gouged to fuck. Now the funny thing is, is I don't see any scarring on the walls. So I think this piston could potentially even be reusable. You could probably run for quite a while with this. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't, but you probably could in a pinch. We're gonna take the jug off in a minute so that we can ex inspect the rings and everything else. And then if I take you back over here to the cylinder head, 
This is the bad news. As far as I can tell, I think three out of four valves are damaged and there is a little bit of damage to the head itself in the combustion chamber, but nothing that can't really be uh, sanded or smoothed out. I think all of the critical stuff is okay. Obviously I'm gonna have to clean it up. It was gonna need all four new valves, but four new valves or four used valves online, you know, might be, I don't know, 150 bucks for new valves rather than, you know, $700 for a new head. Um, so I think this is actually going to be rebuildable, but I need to take this part, clean it up a little bit and take a closer look at everything. Took all the valves out. All four valves were bent. Um, I found, where was it? Right in there. You can see that right there looks like a crack maybe. Uh, but more importantly, if you look right in here, you can see this intake seat survived. This was the intake valve that was really bent and it, cracked right there and that's that's the problem oil is going to come into the cylinder from there and coolant probably came in through this cracked jacket and that's that's what's going to fuck us right there um, because if this seat was okay everything else i could kind of clean up and polish up and whatnot but uh that right there means we need a new head casting and those are expensive so i need to go and do some more online research all right, well, we finally got some more parts in, so recap, piston is off, engine is at top dead center, we can begin reassembly. So let's take a look at what we got over here. Uh, I got a Wysco race piston kit, um, I already put the rings on it, Come beautiful, beautiful machine looking little piston. <clears throat> and so the deal with this is when you put the rings on, put the rings on in the right order, you can see the, the top scraper ring is marked with a little N. That lets you know that that's the, the up face. Um, the little oiling rings aren't marked there, at least on this engine. They're not directional. So and then you wanna make sure you offset the slit in the rings by 90 degrees. So this one goes here, the top oiling ring goes here, the scraper ring goes here, and then the second oiling ring is here. So basically there's never a, a clear way through. Um, comes with a brand new wrist pin and a few new circlips, as well as we got our new gaskets. This is a new jug gasket, new head gasket, new head bolts. Um, this is for the timing chain tensioner. Um, I cleaned up the jug and you can see where it failed right here um, in black. There's actually a crack that runs all the way through here to the, to the water jacket. Um, and that is why our oil was full of coolant and vice versa. Then I'll take you guys over here. Bought this off of uh, eBay, cleaned it up. This is just a nice new jug. It looks to be in pretty decent shape. All I did was I used a little bit of ATF, a power drill, and some honing stones, and went through and honed the cylinder. And so now you can see it's got a nice little crosshatch pattern going. Uh, it's pretty clean. It's going to work out just fine. So first things first, we need to put in our new piston. So there's our new piston in. A couple of tips and tricks. First of all, when you're putting the circlip in, you're going to drop the circlip at least three or four times. If you don't put this towel in, you can ruin your engine because you drop the circle up in there and never get it back. So, real quick. The other thing is this Wiseco High Performance Piston, it, uh, it bounces back and forth like this. And I have never seen that design before, so I actually called up Wiseco uh, earlier today and was like, hey, am I supposed to have some sort of spacers or something in here? And they said, no, well, I mean, it makes sense because, right, you, you won't be worried about up and down and there's no up and down play, but side to side play doesn't really come into effect because you've got the jug on, but it's just part of the design. And that's another tip. Uh, part of the reason that I do business with companies like Wiseco is Monday through Friday, nine to five, you can call them. They will put you through to a tech guy. I didn't wait on hold at any point, put you through to a tech guy who will look up the specs and answer all your questions, walk you through all the measurements. If you have any installation questions, they will help you with those as well. They're really, really good about it, and uh, it really makes a huge difference, in my opinion, um, dealing with a company that can offer you that versus buying some cheap Chinese pistons or whatever and having no idea if the thing is right or not. Next up is our brand new jug gasket. It only goes one way, and you can tell which side is up because this hole is off center. So after this, we can slip our jug on. And the trick there is you want to pinch this top ring to help get it in there a little smoother. We're also going to put a little bit of oil inside of the jug to help the piston slip right in. Now that I have the jug on, I put the jug screw back in. Um, you don't want to crank on this. It's very, very like low, low torque. But basically, it's just to keep the jug flattened in place. 
So good news, we finally got our head, and this guy did a phenomenal job packing everything up. Shipped me everything, including the old head bolts for reference, as well as this came all assembled. A really clean head. Looks like somebody's done a little bit of hand porting here on the intake. Um, but this head is in really good shape. There's a little bit of wear here, but uh, nothing that can really be felt too badly. It looks a lot worse than it is. But this head is super clean. Um, valve seats are nicely cut. Very, very happy with it. Um, and it looks like this is the piston that he sent me. This is what ran in the head before. Um, and this is a Wiseco uh, high compression piston as well. So it's the same piston that we put into our engine, what's in here before. Now I'm going to go ahead and reuse the cam and all the valve train that came with this head. Um, because in my experience, it's best to reuse that stuff that's already made it all the metals already made it but we are going to definitely use um, some molly uh, assembly lube to get it all together so the next step is we can put down our head gasket um, put in our new um, head bolts uh, that we bought because they're one-time use and start torquing everything down and from here, it's basically just a uh, bit of a marathon to put everything back together. Uh, and hopefully it should, it should all go back together pretty easily. The hardest thing is going to be locating the head and making sure it lines up uh, with the intake. One thing to keep in mind um, is before you install the head gasket, you need to install this. This is your second timing chain tensioner. Um, it actually slips in under there. Now that this is on, uh, the next big step is going to be getting getting the head on there. <clears throat> it went on without too much fuss. We're still going to screw around with this little rubber bit and obviously a bunch of other stuff. But uh, the head went on. These are all just finger tight right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to install these set screws, tighten them down a little bit. Um, and then we're going to torque the head. And I'm not a big, like you must torque everything to spec proponent but head bolts are just one of those things that um, you absolutely positively have to torque to spec otherwise you're just not going to have a real good time so we got a little torque wrench here um, i got the torque spec from the manual we're going to set it and uh, when you're doing head bolts um, i don't want to say every engine does this but almost every engine i've ever worked on requires multiple steps so uh, our head bolts need to be 33 pound feet total. And you wanna do it in two or three steps at a minimum. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna torque every head bolt to 10 pounds. Then we're gonna torque every head bolt to 22 pounds. Then we're gonna torque every head bolt to 33 pounds. And then we will be done with that. Now that we've got the head bolts in, the next step is we gotta install the valve train. Which means we gotta make sure our timing is set up, which means we gotta come over to the other side here. And if you take a look in there, you can see there's a dot and an arrow and when you're looking at them dead nuts on they're lined up and that's top dead center so now we know how we know the crank is set to top dead center so we can set the cam to top dead center and then while we're over here we can just go ahead and this is uh, probably like a water temperature sensor now to set timing in this engine you have two little hash marks you can see right there you want them to be uh lined up with this surface right here so you can see we're perfectly lined up over here and we're gonna now wanna go come back and just double check our crank sensors, or our crank lineup is still there. So now we can put in the, um, the cam retainer caps. And on this engine you have to be careful because the cam bearings are replaceable so they slide back and forth. Uh, so you're gonna wanna get this lined up exactly and you also wanna be very careful not to drop these things into, um, into the engine because that would be bad. Now, <clears throat> I'm using this stuff. This is Redline Assembly Lube. I've had this bottle for years and built countless engines with it. This stuff's great. It's basically just a Molly lubricant. <coughs> and you run it for a couple hours and then you change out the oil like you normally would and it's like it was never there. But it helps with that first dry startup. There we go. <clears throat> Our cam lock retainers are in. You can see the cam has almost no play side to side. Um, a little bit that's just in the bearings. It's totally normal. You can see our timing is still set here. We'll check on the other side, our timing is still set. Um, that's one thing I can't stress enough. Check your timing. Every step I do when I'm rebuilding a motor, after I've set the timing, I check it. So put the camera tuners on, check the timing. Put the spark plug in, check the timing. <coughs> because one tooth off on the timing, you trash a brand new engine, it's not worth it. It's an easy thing to do. And the more you learn to double check it, the more you learn to trust yourself and know that you're doing a good job. Now, at this point, um, let's see, what else do we need to put in? We need to put, after this point, I think we can actually uh, kickstart it over um, just, just by hand and make sure nothing binds and everything seems to work. 
Okay, so the time you change tensioner is in, basically you want to untension it, put it in there, put the bolts down, and then release it and it'll auto-tension the chain. You can see it's quite taut, um, but still a little bit of give. <clears throat> so that's exactly what that's supposed to do. Um, it can be kind of a pain in the butt to get in there. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust this and tighten the intake and then put the, um, the cover on the valves. So there we go, everything back together, everything tightened up. I got water in it, last thing to do is put oil in it. Now, this is the engine oil fill. And on the other side, there is a separate oiling system for the transmission. And what you wanna do is put about 670, 700 milliliters of oil uh, into each side. And it's kind of a clever system, I guess it's like a race system, so it's like half two stroke, half four stroke. Uh, in the sense that you have sever separate systems, um, but we actually drained everything when we took everything apart, <clears throat> even though it probably didn't have to drain the transmission. But, so we're gonna put 700 milliliters of oil on each side and put the tank back on, and I think that we're ready to fire it up. 